Okay, welcome to this video. Here I'm going to show you what to do if you have a, a, a data set like this. Here's my raw data graph. I've got clearly just one trend. Sure looks like a power function, right? And uh, a power function where the power is between, you know, 0 and 1. Um, <clears throat> and I take this data. Here's my independent variable. I change the surface area of pieces of paper as they fell from a fixed height. And I measured the time. For each surface area, you know, there were 10 surface areas. That's the IV, the independent variable. And there were 10 values of the independent variable. I, I collected three values of the dependent variable at each area, and I averaged the three times together. So I was measuring how fast it takes for the paper to fall. And <clears throat> then I do a log-log graph. Here's my log-log graph. I'm testing for a power function. And this is clearly not a straight line. My log-log graph is not linear. I mean, I take away the best fit line, and it's really easy to see that there's this curvature, especially when I zoom in on the graph, right? When I zoom in on the graph. Let's even zoom in some more. If you don't zoom in, you might think, hey, my log-log graph is straight. Bam, done. Uh, this is not the case here. You see that better when zoomed in. Notice on my first graph, this is incomplete. I don't have my error bars. Um, I also haven't shown the three trials. I'm just showing the average time. Okay. So what do you do in this case? Why isn't this, isn't this graph straight? Log log should be straight if we have a power function. And clearly we have a power function. Well, here's the reason. This raw data graph has a y-intercept. And log log graphs don't really know what to do with y-intercepts. They're only good for figuring out the power of your function, right? So if you have dv equals k, a constant, times iv raised to the n power, n is the power, and you find out what n is by looking at the slope of your log-log graph. Oops. By looking at the slope of, can I get this to go back? The slope of this log-log graph is how you find n, right? So if your function is actually something like this, then the log-log graph freaks out and it doesn't know how to find n anymore. So here's what you do. You take away the y-intercept. On my y-axis, I'm measuring time in seconds, and I sort of start from the right of the graph, and I move to the left, and I follow the trend, and it comes down and it gets really steep. And I think if I were to follow this all the way back to the y-intercept, I would hit the y-intercept around maybe a little above 0.4, maybe right at 0.4. I mean, the graph gets pretty steep here, so maybe it comes down all the way to 0.4. So <clears throat> let me put down y-intercept on the first graph, I think is 0.4. So you take away that y-intercept from every y-value. My y-values are time. Where are those? Here they are. I'm going to subtract 0.4 from each time. So I'm going to do t, and that's in seconds, minus 0.4 seconds. t minus, well, instead of typing out 0.4, I'm going to click on this cell right here. And then I'm going to copy this down. Whoa. Copy this down to here. And let's see. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm not subtracting 0.4 anymore. When I copy my formula down, it moves 0.4. It moves the cell being referenced down as well. So this is wrong. What do I do? I want it to always refer to I1. I don't want this cell reference to change. I want it. Uh, I want all of these formulas in the column, in the entire column, to refer to I1. So you put dollar signs in front of the I, the letter, and the one, the number. And then when you copy it down, the I1 doesn't change. That stays the same. OK. So look, if we were to move our Y values from here, average time, to average time minus 0.4, then now the graph doesn't have a y-intercept. Comes in and bam, it falls all the way down to zero zero. Okay, uh, but we don't need to make that graph. That's not ne that's not necessary. I just wanted to show you so you can see exactly what it is we're doing. 
Now we're going to take the log. Log of t in seconds minus 0.4 seconds. Taking the log of that. Copy it down. And instead of doing a log log graph with a y-intercept on data which has a y-intercept, now we're going to do a log log graph on the data which has no y-intercept at all. And let's add that back. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Let's add a trend line and see how good we did. Display equation, r squared value. That is just beautiful. Look at how straight that line is. And here's the really cool thing. Because I put my y-intercept up here, if I want to tweak and play around, I can try and change it a little bit. So what if my y-intercept is 0.42, right? I mean, maybe it's not quite 0.4. Maybe it hits a little bit higher. Uh, whoa, my r-squared value just went up, and now the data points are even closer to the line. See that? Here they're a little bit more spread out at the end. When I change it to 0.42, they get closer. Uh, maybe I think it's 0.43. Uh, let's see, 0.43. Sometimes you have to click on the graph. 0.42. Uh, about, about the same, so I'll go with 4, 0.42. Um, <clears throat> so when, when I use 0.42 as my y-intercept, the slope of the log, gra log graph is basically 0.4. Let me see it. 0.3945. I'm going to round that up to 0.4, and I'm going to say the power of my power function, the power is 0.4. So what do I do? I take the independent variable and I modify it. I raise it to the power of 0.4. So that's going to be area to the power of 0.4 or centimeters to the 0.4 times 2, that gives 0.8. So what is it? It's area to the 0.4. And I would make one final graph. I'll move this down. One final graph with my modified independent variable on the x-axis. Modified, so this is going to be area to the 0.4 unit would be centimeters to the 0.8 and I move my independent variable my x values over to here and what a beautiful straight line now I don't have my my error bars I'm ignoring error bars for the moment um, that's a separate analysis so what I wanted to show you here was how to a function um, I wanted to show you how to get the real, the true power when your data is being, it has, has this significant y-intercept. Now, if your y-intercept is nearly zero, you won't have to go through this whole thing, this whole process. But if you have a significant y-intercept, I mean, look, the y-intercept is point, uh, point 0.4, and the data range is from, you know, the data range is from 0.55 to 1.2. So that's almost the same size as the y-intercept itself. So my y-intercept on this first graph is noticeable, and it negatively impacts the ability for the log-log test to find the power. When that's the case for you, you can subtract away that y-intercept, like I've shown, and then do your log-log analysis. And then on your final function graph, you pretend as though you never subtracted those, you, you never pretend as though you never subtracted away that y-intercept at all. I mean, right here, my 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 y axis my y values here are uh, my original average times. I didn't put on my y axis time minus the 0.4, or really I made it 0.42, didn't I? So I'd have to go back and fix that um, because I made it 0.42. So you you pretend as though nothing had ever happened, and your log log gave you the power, which you you know you then use to modify the x values, the independent variable values. Um, another thing to notice, notice this is 0.42, and the y-intercept right here on this graph is 0.4241. That's really not super surprising. Um, probably not worth commenting on in a report because this is, we, we designed our final function to have that y-intercept. We really designed it to have this y-intercept. Um, you know, the analysis you would want to go through is, why is there, why What's the reason for a y-intercept at all? And if you're dropping pieces of paper from a fixed height and varying the surface area, then you're like, oh, hey, wait a second. 
even when there's no surface area, even when there's no air resistance, the paper still has to fall to the ground, and that still takes time. So there is still some amount of time taken to fall when the area is zero. So when A is zero, you still expect a value of T. So that's why there's a y-intercept here. Um, so so don't don't be too uh, you know don't comment too much on the fact that this y-intercept that you designed has is matching the value of y-intercept on your graph. Okay. So that's how you do it. There you go.